Hello and welcome to tutorial 202 and a Gold Pass member asked me how one would go about creating an indicator that told you what the price would need to get to for an RSI to reach a certain value. So let me let me just show you if we go to the inputs for the program edit studies and then double click and we'll see that we've got four inputs the uh, the price for which we're calculating the RSI the length in this case two, the the target RSI. Now we're saying, in other words, that for the RSI to get to 70, as represented by this line, then price would need to cross this line here, the red line in this case. Now there's two lines, and I explain that when we when we look at the calculation. The way this is presented is controlled by plot both, and that's what I'm going to show you when we look at the calculation but the key thing is the target RSI is the value of the RSI that we want to know what price needs to get to for that to take place and the length of the RSI and the price are the uh, the same things that you would put in a normal RSI. I'm talking of which uh, I've got a normal RSI applied at the bottom applied to the chart this is not part of tutorial 202, but I thought it'd be useful to see what the RSI was doing so we could get an idea how that related to this program. So let's have a look at the code. And the key thing that we're doing is we're taking the RSI calculation, which is can be seen here, and we're doing the algebra and expressing it as price. So uh, the, the calculation is actually ch uh, CHG ratio equals net change average over total change average. In other words, uh, this value divided by this value that is then put into this formula here. So what we need to do is reverse that out and then express the value as price. So, but what I've done is included the calculation here and I'm just, uh, just basically high school algebra uh, going through and calculating the price. Now, one of the problems is in the total change average, we have this abs value. In other words, if price is greater than price one bar ago, then that's fine. But if price one bar ago is greater than price, then we make this calculation positive. That's a little bit more difficult to do. So what I've done is uh, by testing the price versus price one bar ago, uh, we, we plot both lines, but uh, we can have the option of plotting the correct one slightly more thickly because clearly uh, this this case is always going to give a positive value in our situation because we're calculating both uh, when the price is greater than price one bar ago and situations where price one bar ago is greater or equal than price we're going to get two different calculations and they're represented here and you can uh, peruse these, perhaps try working them out yourself. But what I'm doing is in this section of the program is saying if plot both, that means that we're going to plot both anyway. So in this case, if I were to go to studies, edit studies and set plot both to true, then the calculations would be no different. But what we would see is these lines would both be plotted. If that's set to false, then you just see the actual line. Well, you see both, but you'll see the one that is the correct uh, line is plotted more thickly. And incidentally, uh, the calculations that I just showed you below, the result of that calculation, I just copied straight into the plot statements, plot two and plot three. Hopefully, this will be useful to you. Please, if you're not already, go to markplex.com and join the mailing list. And uh, also, of course, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you very much.